Selecting an ESP32 wireless microcontroller used to be an easy thing to do since there was really only one model available. But that all changed in the last few years with the release of multiple new models of the ESP32. And these new models, well, they give you more design flexibility, but they make the selection process much more challenging. And in fact, it can be kind of overwhelming for some people. So in this video, you're going to learn about the different ESP32 models and how to pick the best one for your project. Now, there are three stages of ESP32 solutions that you need to be aware of. The first level or the first stage is the system on a chip or just SOC for short. And this is the bare ESP32 chip that you'd purchase if you were doing a fully custom design. The second stage are modules. And an ESP32 module, it's designed to be soldered onto a custom PCB. So it eliminates the need for any custom design for the ESP32 circuit or an antenna. Modules are also pre-certified, so they simplify your certification process compared to using a system on a chip in a custom circuit, especially if you use a module with a built-in antenna. And then the third stage are development kits, and these are larger boards that include the embedded module, but they also bring out the various I.O. to header pins for easy access during early development. When selecting the ESP32 for your project, you want to start at the most fundamental level with the system on a chip and then work your way up to the module and then finally the development kit. Just be sure you download my free guide from ESP32 Prototype to Production using the link in the description below. Designing with the bare chip is usually only done after you reach a few hundred thousand production units. For lower production volumes, it's almost always best to start by using a pre-certified module. A custom SOC design only makes sense at higher production volumes when the increase in profit margin outweighs the extra cost of certification that's required for a custom wireless design. Although most projects are better off using a module, we're gonna start by selecting the ESP32 system on a chip. The Espressive ESP Wi-Fi family of microcontrollers started with the original ESP8266, which is an in embedded a single core microcontroller with a Wi-Fi radio. Well, then in 2016, Espressive released the first ESP32, which added a Bluetooth radio and an optional dual core microcontroller. Even though the ESP32 included lots of new capabilities compared to the ESP8266, the price increase was really quite minimal. The original model of the ESP32, well, it's still available, but for various reasons, it's not the version I recommend for most new projects. For years, you only had to decide on a single or a dual core version of the, of the ESP32, also the amount of memory needed and the package. But then lots of new models in the ESP32 family came along with many significant differences. The additional options are great to have, but they also drastically complicate the selection process. Well, now in addition to just the ESP32, we have the ESP32S series, the ESP32C series, and the ESP32H series of chip families. So the S series is intended to be a better replacement for the original ESP32, whereas the C and the H series, well, those are more specialized models that I'll get to in a moment. The S series is based on a new and improved version of the 32-bit microprocessor core used in the original ESP32, but this version is the LX7, whereas the original ESP32 used the LX6 version of the processor core. The S series has a lot of other improvements as well compared to the original ESP32, including improved security features. One of the most desirable features that's always been missing from the original ESP32 is a native USB port. The original ESP32 didn't have a native USB port, so it required the use of a separate USB to UART converter circuit which had a speed limited to only three megabits per second. But that's been fixed in the S series, which adds a full speed USB on the go port, which theoretically can do up to 12 megabits per second. And the on the go or just OTG just means it can switch between the roles of host and device. Other improvements in the S series include more GPIO pins, better low power capabilities, 
and the ability to add up to one gigabyte of external RAM or flash memory. So the S series is faster, it's more secure, it includes USB support, more GPIO pins, and it has the ability to add more memory than the original ESP32. Well, there are currently two versions in the S series. We have the S2 and the S3. The S2 is a single core and it only supports Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth. On the other hand, the S3 is a dual core microcontroller that supports both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5, and it comes with more embedded flash memory than the S2. Now the C series is fundamentally different from the ESP32s that we've discussed so far. The design of the C series arose out of two things, the pandemic related supply chain issues and the popularity of small, low cost IoT products like smart plugs. Although the ESP32 S series is really impressive and is intended to be a replacement for the original series, one negative is it comes in a larger package. Well, the feature that most significantly increases the chip size is the amount of embedded flash memory. Both models of the S series come in packages measuring seven millimeters by seven millimeters, whereas the C series is available in packages as small as four millimeters by four millimeters or a five by five package. So Espresso decided to design a new ESP32 model that would require less memory and be smaller and cheaper. And apparently this was the, the main motivation for the creation of the C series. The biggest change that they made to accomplish these new design was using a different processor core. The C series uses a RISC or just a reduced instruction set processor core instead of the core used in all of the previous ESP32 models. The C series comes in three versions. We have the C2, the C3, and the C6. The C2 has a single RISC core operating at up to 120 megahertz, and it supports both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5, but it doesn't include USB, and the security features included are pretty minimal. Unfortunately, the C2 doesn't even appear to be stocked by any of the big component distributors, so I would avoid using it in most cases. The C3, on the other hand, operates up to 160 megahertz, includes a full speed USB port, although it's not on the go like the S series, and it has much better security features compared to the C2. It too supports both Wi Fi and Bluetooth 5. Then we have the C6 version, which uses the same 160 megahertz core as the C3, but it adds on an additional low power RISC core that runs at only 20 megahertz. The C6 also steps it up by supporting Wi-Fi 6, where all of the previous versions we've looked at, including the S series, only support Wi-Fi 4. In addition to Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5, the C6 also adds wireless support for Zigbee, Thread, and Matter protocols. Overall, the C series primarily makes sense if you need the smallest possible chip size at the lowest cost, or perhaps if you need the Zigbee, thread or matter protocols that come with the C6 version. Next, we have the ESP32H series, which currently consists only of the H2 version. I'm not sure if you can call it a series if there's only one, but we'll call it a series for now. I have a feeling there's gonna be more in the, the H series than the H2. Well, the H2 is an extension of the C series and it uses the same RISC processor core except it's only running at 96 megahertz compared to the 120 to 160 megahertz speeds of the C series. The biggest difference between it and every other Espressive chip is it doesn't offer Wi-Fi. Instead, it only supports Bluetooth, Zigbee, Matter, and Thread. Due to these protocols lower throughput speeds compared to Wi-Fi, the H2 can run at a lower clock speed and thus consume less power. Once you've selected the system on a chip for your project, now you want to choose the best module that uses this SOC. Fortunately, well, this part's pretty easy once you've selected the chip itself. The main decision you need to make is whether you want a module with a built-in PCB antenna or a one with a connector for an external antenna. If the internal antenna's performance meets your requirements, then I'd select a module with the built-in antenna because this simplifies your design and the certifications process. Next, once you've selected the module, you just have to simply select the development board that uses that module. 
The development board is a larger PCB that connects all of the various I.O. to header pins for easy access. The development board also includes the USB to UART converter for easy programming, and it also includes a linear regulator to step down the 5-volt USB supply to the 3.3 volts required by the ESP32. The USB to UART converter is also included on the development boards for the models that even include a native USB port, so the S-series, the C3, C6, and H2 models. For those boards, you'll commonly find two USB connectors, one that goes through the USB to UART converter and one that connects to the native USB port. So for most projects, you're likely gonna to wanna to go with the S2 or S3 models. Choose the S2 if you only need Wi-Fi. If you also need Bluetooth or an additional processor core, then choose the S3. For the S series, I'd suggest the mini module versions, which come in both S2 and S3 flavors with either a built-in antenna or a connector for an external antenna. And don't forget to be sure you download the free guide below from prototype to production with ESP32 microcontroller.